Welcome to ThinkTech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. My name is Alice Lee Hagen. Today with me is a guest of mine, uh, Mackie Jones. She is the Senior Human Resource Consultant with Planning Services of Hawaii. Welcome, Mackie. Thank you, Alice. How are you? I'm doing just fine, and it's Good. great to have you. Thank you. I have to let you know that you. Uh, I was just thinking about um, the interviews that I've done, and you are my first human resource person. Really? And, yes, and it's an honor to have you. But first of all, let me start off by sharing with you my perception of the <laughs> HR profession, okay. and then you can... I guess, um, correct all my preconceptions and tell us more about your 25 plus years of experience both here in the U.S. and internationally. And of course, when I looked at your resume, wow, you've done a lot. You've opened <laughs> what, you. 20, 25 five-star, five-diamond resort and Las Vegas Convention Center, but I think I'm jumping ahead. So now, when I hear about human resources, I have a lot of respect for your profession. And of course, um, at Shidler, we have this Master of Human Resource Management mm -hmm. program. But then we also run a lot of other programs. And I can't help but notice, well, there are a lot of people interested in human resource management, no doubt of that. Um, but I also realize that most of them are women. Ah. And they have a very different dynamics than, for example, the executive MBA program, which really draw upon a, a very diverse pool of people from different professions. And then, of course, when, when I think about my work, human resources, I go to them, I get the, their help with, I guess, recruiting. Um, there are other scenarios, maybe some, some unpleasant situations with personnel. So that is my understanding of human resources. So um, I guess I have to turn to you and ask, um, give us a quick overview of HR. And then after that, I'd like to show a very quick clip of what okay. I found on, um, on the internet. Good. You know, human resources has changed, Alice, so dynamically. Mm -hmm. um, in the old days, they used to call it the mother's position because a mother they you know anybody that had a small child they would give them that job because they thought it was just nurturing the employees that were hired in the company mm -hmm. over the time mm -hmm. you almost have to be a mathematician because think about any company mm -hmm. who is your greatest expense mm -hmm. it's human resources is the people that mm -hmm. you employ mm -hmm. uh, you have to be a lawyer because you have to know federal laws, labor laws, mm -hmm. uh, um, state laws. Mm -hmm. Hawaii is a very unique state because mm -hmm. we have our own state laws just like some other, um, each state has their own, but Hawaii has a unique one. When they always talk about laws, they always um, single out Hawaii, California, and Massachusetts just because of the uniqueness. You have to be a strategist now because people are always trying to find a way to either get a higher wage, mm -hmm. get a better benefit. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing about this position right now is you really have to be honest and look somebody in the eye mm -hmm. and be able to tell them the truth and be able to say, this is really what it is. This is what's happening. This is where you're failing. This is where I can help you. So it's a strategist your cheerleader, you're their biggest support. Well, I guess this really reminds me of your resume because <laughs> you, uh, I guess, um, uh, what captured me when I look at your resume was, okay, you have um, 25 plus years executive experience, but you are into strategic planning. You've oh, talked about it. that. Yes. Leadership, uh, innovative thinking. So that's all the things that you just kind of summarized. Mm -hmm. um, now, you mentioned that Hawaii is unique. Um, Hawaii, California, Massachusetts are unique when it comes to a lot of these HR issues. Can you elaborate on that for a little? Sure, I can. Um, Hawaii is unique in the sense that we have had the Hawaii Prepaid Health Act. Sure. So for those of us that were raised in Hawaii, um, I was born and raised here. Mm -hmm. Then I left here. I haven't lived here for 34 years. And going around the world and living in different locations, I really realized how much we in Hawaii take for granted 
that any time we work anywhere for more than 20 hours a week, we got medical. Whereas um, there's a lot of states that you can work full time and you still don't get paid for medical. It's good to know that and it's great because, well, you said that you were born here, you went away, so you have a very different perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, probably somebody who is more appreciative of what we have here. Definitely. And I think that the other difference mm -hmm. is, and in fact, we're going to see this clip, and I love this clip, and I'm so glad that you brought it in mm -hmm. when I'm here, because Hawaii also has a culture where we have the loyalty. Mm -hmm. When we work for an employer, we have a loyalty. In, in the younger generations, you see the flip-flop. You know, they'll change jobs much more, mm -hmm. and that's because they are in what I call the the IT, you know, generation. Uh -huh. They they text. Um, my son can text, and he's right downstairs, and he will text me something, and, and I ha have to laugh because I'll call him on the phone and say, "Let's talk." Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. so the whole generation of the loyalty and staying with a company, um, you don't have that anymore. So right. you'll, you're seeing people turn over. Mm -hmm. So. In HR, I've had to look for some really innovative ways to recruit and to interview people. Wow. Now, maybe I can ask you to hold your thought on okay. that. And um, producer, if you don't mind starting to roll that um, clip here. So I guess while uh, we're sharing this video, um, I, I got this uh, on the internet and they are talking about the changes um, in human resources not a sense that in the profession but um, people as a resource how uh, for example especially this one this name mm -hmm. the richest in the world largest military well it really depends on the context and you will see in the next slide they said well in 1900s it was Great Britain but then over time, it was the U.S. and so forth. Um, and I guess they have really some interesting statistics. And I, I was really blown away when they say that, okay, guess which country will have the largest number of English speakers um, in 10 years? And this video was from 2009. I would not have, I would not have guessed that. And of course, the answer will be China. I don't know how they determine those statistics. I mean, have you seen that sort of numbers we, before? Um, I worked with a company that had a hotel in China. Mm -hmm. And this is a number of years ago when mm -hmm. we had the hotel. Mm -hmm. And I was so surprised that I had to find um, a, what they called an American cook. Mm -hmm. And I said, we're in China. Why would we want an American cook? Mm -hmm. Because we were one of the only few American hotels there, mm -hmm. um, Americans still wanted egg over easy. They didn't want a steam egg mm -hmm. that Chinese would have. Mm -hmm. or they, they wanted bacon. Mm -hmm. No one knew what bacon was. Mm -hmm. and, and, but yet now, culturally, we, we went through the stage, and I don't know if you recall it, where every time you called in airlines for reservations, you were actually calling India. <laughs> Did you remember that and how frustrating it was? Well, surprisingly, mm -hmm. you're now calling China. Really? And you no, don't I even know, know it. That. Uh -huh. No, I didn't and know that. And their flair and their accent and everything is very localized. But there's oh. a lot of hotels that are using Chinese companies for their reservation lines. So then that fact is true. It is true. Wow. It now, um, I know that we were talking about um, uh, this uh, uh, Chinese hotel hiring uh, a US chef, but I know that some of the t statistics went, <laughs> went well, we, we were showing the statistics of, um, and you alluded to that earlier on, that uh, one, in four, uh, one in four employees uh, have worked in the company for less than one year, and mm -hmm. I guess one out of two has worked there for less than five years. So, so many changes, and I guess we are kind of exploring or we are talking about these, these changing trends. So what can you tell us? Well, you know, when I got into mm -hmm. consulting, when I got back here a little over a year ago, mm -hmm. one of the jobs that I was asked to um, work with was Planning Services of Hawaii. 
Planning Services Hawaii is a full service. Um, they have four divisions and they have an insurance broker division. So they sell medical and, and dental and vision. There's a voluntary benefits because so many people real, don't realize that you hear the term 80-20, meaning that your coverage mm -hmm. is 80% covered by your medical plan and 20% is covered by you. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a catastrophic claim, 20% mm -hmm. could take almost your entire year salary. So they have what they call voluntary benefits. So you can, like an AFLAC, you hear about the duck, you yes, know, the AFLAC. Uh -huh. That helps you pay for that 20% or the oh. deductibles. Oh, okay. And then we have a division called Human Resources Consulting. Mm -hmm. And the reason that the company started, mm -hmm. they're old friends and they said to me, with your experience, come in and help companies think outside the box. Mm -hmm. and, and I love the word that you use, it's innovative. Mm -hmm. And I use the word creative. Mm -hmm. Give you an example, as I'm writing employee handbooks, mm -hmm. I'm getting to meet different clients all around the world because it's now required that companies have to have a new handbook. Oh, okay. But they have to fill it with federal and state, you know, FMLA, and about holidays, and about vacation. Things that are not necessarily exciting that you want to jump up and to go, wow, this is so exciting. But let me give you an example about a pet company. There's a pet company out in Y. Kelly mm -hmm. that said, Mackie, help me write your employee handbook. Mm -hmm. And as I got to know them, mm -hmm. they're offering to say to their employees, come in and shampoo your pets here at work. Mm -hmm. Use our facilities. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they're encouraging their employees to walk the talk that they're doing. Well, they're giving discounts. I'm glad you brought that up, okay. Um, as you said, writing uh, an employee handbook may not be the most exciting thing. And of course, I myself am an employee, and I mean, do I really go and look at that handbook? How do you encourage that? Well, we encourage it because we do orientation, mm -hmm. and we make it exciting and say, you know, you don't necessarily read this, but mm -hmm. when it happens to you, mm -hmm. how do you interpret it? Mm -hmm. So when I tend to write a handbook, I don't write it over an eighth grade reading level. Mm -hmm. I want them to understand that this is benefits that are for them. These mm -hmm. are laws that are protecting them. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the employer, protecting the employee. Um, you know about Silicon Valley and Cupertino, that area, which is the dot-com era. When I was doing consulting work, mm -hmm. there was an energy drink, and I will remain nameless, but mm -hmm. there was an ener energy drink, and they said, Mackie, we can't keep programmers. We can't keep people and our staff. What can we do? Mm -hmm. And I said to the, to the manager, uh, the owner, mm -hmm. I said, how much outside of the box do you want to think? And mm -hmm. he said, totally outside mm -hmm. of the box. Mm -hmm. So it was a big, huge warehouse, mm -hmm. and he loves dogs. And so he encouraged everybody to bring their pet to work. Wow. That was like a winner. Mm -hmm. So I said, if you had a dream job, what would you do? And he gave me ideas of what he wanted. So we tried it, and here's what we did. Um, the human resource staff, mm -hmm. with our help, at break. California has a required break. Mm -hmm. So they would take their desk, just like us, hit the brakes, I mean, release the brakes, it would be wheeled away, and in comes basketball hoops and everything. So for the next 15 minutes, we were playing basketball and we were eating ices and we're having a lot of fun. Lunchtime came and here came a truck from CPK okay. and served everybody lunch. By doing that, he found out his employee turned over, just went nil. Wow, that's really outside the box. Outside the box, <laughs> right? <laughs> wow. Have you ever heard of anything like that? Uh, no, but that makes me think of another question that you reminded me of. Okay, some of the different recruiting trends. But we're coming on a break, so I guess I'll leave that question okay. for you after the break then. All right, sounds good. Okay. My guest is Mackie Jones. She is a senior human resource consultant with Planning Services of Hawaii. We'll be right back after the break. And you're watching ThinkTech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. Yay! Hi, aloha. My name is Chris Leatham, and I have host a show called The Economy and You. Uh, the show plays every Wednesday at noon. And on my show, I bring on guests who are interested or working in the technology space. And uh, so I'd like you to come and watch the show and learn with me about all the sort of exciting things that we're doing in Hawaii to build and grow our economy ecosystem. 
So I'd like to say aloha, and I look forward to seeing you on the show. Thank you. We're back. Okay. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. My name is Alice Lee Hagen. My guest today is Mackie Jones. She is the Senior Human Resource Consultant with Planning Services of Hawaii. Mackie, fascinating about this company in Silicon Valley trying to think of different, a really out-of-the-box way to retain their employees. So that reminds me of the next question. So what have you seen in terms of the, I guess, changing or evolving trends of company hiring talents and trying to keep them? You know, I've seen... Oops, that's okay. Okay, <laughs> keep talking. Okay, I've seen a really big trend, one that I probably advocate um, I personally, I really don't like resumes. And people will say, oh my gosh, Mackie, that's the foundation of knowing what a person is. If I'm gonna hire somebody that I really want to make sure that it's a, it's a really heavy position that we need and we need somebody that is going to be strong and this fast, I would rather put it out saying, write three paragraphs mm -hmm. that tells me what you're qualified and why you want this job. Why do you want it? not your qualifications, tell me why you want it. Mm -hmm. um, we started doing things with companies by saying, don't do the employment hall, don't do the application filling, oh, okay. let's have a coffee hour. Uh -huh. So we do, we have where we put out coffee and we put out pastries and we put out everything. We tend to see who are going to be our potential candidates. How? You'd be surprised how many start to put pastries in their pocket Really? take their coffee and put, you know, how much they can put in a to-go cup, or those that start to interact. Hi, I'm Mackie. Uh -huh. Who are you? Uh -huh. You know, and those that kind of do, um, do you remember the wallflower when we used to go to dances? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wallflowers. We have an exact translation of this in Chinese, okay. but yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. The same thing. Uh -huh. So you start to mm. see who are the ones that are the movers and the shakers, or the ones that are going to come out. Okay. and be, you know, talk to guests and be forward. Coffee hours don't cost you a lot of money, mm -hmm. but they probably weed out so many that you don't have to invest the time of interviewing and saying the same thing where you stop listening to, your, to the applicant because mm -hmm. you're saying the, ins, the exact same thing and thinking about what you have to say next. That's not good for a recruiter. This is a great idea, but does do companies actually implement they that do. type of recruiting oh. mm. method? So we, we're finding a lot, a lot of them are. Oh. It, it, it's so much nicer. You know, mm. come today at 10 o'clock if you're looking for a job, mm -hmm. whether or not it's at a hotel, mm -hmm. whether or not it's at a packing plant, mm -hmm. wherever it is, what a better way. Who shows up on time? Mm -hmm. You said 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So you kind of watch the door and see who comes in at 10.05, who watches comes in at 10.10. 10 that already gives you little signs or who's sitting outside of the door at quarter to 10. Mm -hmm. It's interesting dynamics. But you're also reminding me that as, uh, as a human resource person, um, you have to be really observant then. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be able to read a person. Is this, um, I guess, uh, a characteristic of a successful HR person like you? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. It definitely is. Mm -hmm. I think there's three things that an HR person has to do. Mm -hmm. um, we have the education, and, and I'm so glad that University of Hawaii is doing their master's oh, program. Thank oh, you. That is just so heartwarming. Mm -hmm. Back in my days, uh, human resources was in the wrong school. <laughs> we had school to was major in? In, in business and minor in psychology, you know, because there oh, wasn't really anything okay. that had mm -hmm. uh, human resources. Mm -hmm. It's so fantastic what the University of Hawaii has done. And mm -hmm. if you meet the people there, um, it just brings you warm feelings because they're doing something that a lot of companies don't. And, and one of the questions that has always asked of me is that they say, Mackie, what do you think is missing with today's HR people? Mm -hmm. Great question. And I, I answer by two things, mm -hmm. OJT, on the job training, I would love um, if I could take 
10, 20, and say, come on and work at a human resource office. Okay. Come in and work and just see what we do every day. So, so what type of people would you be looking at and what type of on-the-job training would you be Any providing? college student. Hmm. Any college student. Mm -hmm. You know, I was at um, a Sherm breakfast the other day mm -hmm. and across from me sat one of the Sherm's interns. And she said, you know, Mackie, I'm really thinking of getting into hospitality. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, great. What area would you like to get into? And she said, well, I'm not sure if it's marketing or human resources. And I said, OK, then let me ask you this. Have you already thought that you're willing to work 24-7? And she stopped and she said, 24-7? I said, a hotel never closes. Mm -hmm. So even though you're in human resources mm -hmm. or in marketing, mm -hmm. a group could check in at 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And if you're marketing and sales, you've got to make sure you greet the group. Mm -hmm. um, I used to get calls at 10 o'clock at night saying, we just rushed an employee to the hospital. And I couldn't say, OK, wait till 9 to 5 tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. I got in my car, went to the hospital. You know, oh because God. I wanted to know. I was in human resource. So in hospitalities and in a, a lot of other companies, you're working more than just nine to five. So when you do OJT, it's a great training. Mm -hmm. Second thing mm -hmm. that I think a lot of human resources people have not had the advantage that we have. Which is? Is labor relations. Ah, well, i like to hear more of that because I know we have uh, a lot of that uh -huh. sort of transactions here in labor relations. Um, do they get that in the mainland? No, no. Mm -hmm. I would say that probably about 80% mm -hmm. of uh, human resources recruiters, uh, people that are coming in to apply don't have labor relations, unlike Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Hawaii, we're very lucky, we do. Mm -hmm. In knowing that interaction, knowing the understanding of working with unions, I always look at them as a partner and not an adversary. That's an interesting perspective because I guess, of course, without much knowledge of labor union, that, that type of issues, um, my perception is based on what I've read. And I know it's always very contentious, acrimonious, and all these negative words, right. whereas you say that they are partners. So how did you come to think of it that way? Or have you always been have you always felt that way in terms of your dealings with them? I, uh, I have, mm -hmm. Allison. And, and, and this is probably where, luckily, it helped me internationally. My foundation was here in Hawaii. And because I got to know the union people, mm -hmm. we put on our pants the exact same way. We talked to the, you know, we're there as human resource mm -hmm. executives for the good of the employees. Mm -hmm. So I used to look at the, the union and say, we're on the same side. Mm -hmm. You know, let's look for commonality mm -hmm. rather than looking for the differences. Mm -hmm. So when I went, I can remember when I went to Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And those of people that know me um, will say, Mackie, don't tell that story. Tell the story about the monkeys. And, and, and but the, 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 the Bangladesh story was okay. because I was kidnapped when I got to Bangladesh. And they put me, you know, in binders and everything. Oh and gosh. they put me in a room and wow. gave me bread and water. And I said, guys, I'm here because I'm here to help you. You know, we're, we've got a contract to solve. Why are you kidnapping me? Well, they did it for show. They wanted pictures. They wanted to do it. So they said, you have one phone call to the mainland, anywhere in the US, anywhere you wanted to call. So I decided to call my husband because I knew that he wouldn't react. So I called him, and it was 2 in the morning, and mm -hmm. he said, why are you waking me up? I know you're going to be OK. Bye, and hung up. <laughs> oh my gosh. So he, didn't, he wasn't worried, because if, he, if I called anyone else, they would have worried. Can, can you backtrack a bit? What brought you to Bangladesh, and who were these people who kidnapped you? And um, I was there because we had a hotel there, mm. and it was the union contract that had to be settled. So I went there to help settle the contract. And Alice, listen to what was their biggest gripe. It wasn't wages. It wasn't medical or fringe benefits. It was the fact that once they li uh, skipped from entry level position, mm -hmm. which was like a dishwasher, to a busboy, mm -hmm. that they, in the union contract, was not afforded another maid at home. Oh. Okay, 
So how did you get it resolved? And I mean, there must be so much, so many surprises and things that you do not expect. So how did you deal in, with that situation? In the culture, mm -hmm. you learn the culture. I have a favorite saying that says, think global, but act local. Mm. And that could be said for any company. Mm -hmm. If I knew globally mm -hmm. that union contracts are basically the same, but I had to understand that in the local community, if you were employed at our hotel, you were considered a middle-class person. Oh, and okay. as a middle-class employee, you should have had three servants at home. Oh, so it's very status. How, how long ago was this? This is in, in the early 2000s. My goodness. Imagine that. Um, now, Bangladesh is so far away from us. And actually, I do know of one, one lady from Bangladesh. And the situation there, I guess they have difficult situations. But how did you actually get involved and to be able to understand the culture? I mean, it's all great to say that we have to think global, but act local. But when we don't even know what local means, so how well, do you do that? You know, one of the things that I did um, with, when I was with a hotel company, mm. I, we were in 14 different countries. Mm. And so we had hotels in 14 countries. Mm -hmm. And my first assignment was to go and see all of these countries. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to do five things when I go to each country. Oh. And everyone picked up the paper and said, okay, she's coming to visit and she wants five things. Mm -hmm. And they would call me and say, are you sure? Are you sure? And I said, I'm positive. The two things you can probably understand, and one is the embassy. I wanted to know where the American embassy was because we were bringing in expats. The second was the American schools. Everywhere in, this, in the, um, the U.S., I mean, mm -hmm. we think for granted that our kids are going to go to public or private. When you go to another country, the American schools is where Great Britain and the Americas, everybody will go to that right. school because you're taught English. Mm -hmm. You're in a curriculum where you can come back mm -hmm. and still keep on. The last three surprised everyone. One was the hospitals because I wanted to know the conditions. Mm. What are the conditions mm -hmm. if you got hospitalized? Mm -hmm. Whether or not it was an employee or a guest, mm -hmm. I wanted to know what that is. Mm -hmm. The last two was the prison and the morgue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why is that? Well, because uh -huh. like in Singapore, they came people. And in, in India, you know, so all of these Different countries had a different way of punishing. Vanuatu, you know, we had um, Survivor Vanuatu. And after a while, I couldn't watch Survivor because I knew right behind there was a five-star property. And here you had people, these two tribes, you know, fighting for each other. But when in Vanuatu, if someone sent um, a box of marijuana, mm. so we had a Canadian student mm. that was interning for us in Vanuatu. So his friends just thought, what the heck, let's send I'm sorry, him. where's Vanuatu? Oh, Vanuatu mm. is in below uh, New Zealand. Oh. It's in New Caledonia. Oh, OK. All right. And so they sent him a box of weed, just as like you're in no man's land. So, you know, so it's imprisonment and it's death. And oh so if I didn't know what the environment was, I couldn't have turned around and saved him and got him out of there and said, look, you know, he doesn't know any better. He just arrived. Here's the circumstances. You confiscated it. He never took it. He, he never consumed it. We'll get him out of Vanuatu and he will never enter the country again. That sort of thing. So like in, in the morgue um, in India, because the population is so large, mm. they burn, the, they burn uh, they put it on stilts and they burn the body right, right away. Right, right. Well, we couldn't have an American being burnt right away. So uh -huh. when someone passed, we had to know to send him immediately to New Delhi where they had refrigerations, they had capabilities. Oh and it, so it was understanding gosh. those things. So wow. it was understanding that culture and that's what was so important for me. That's amazing. Now, you've told us some memorable experience, but of course I'd like to backtrack to okay. how you became involved in all these international projects and being trying to understand the international HR. But we are on our second break, okay. so we can continue our conversation afterwards. Great.
My guest is Mackie Jones. She is the Senior Human Resources Consultant with Planning Services of Hawaii. You're watching ThinkTech Hawaii uh, Business Education Spotlight. We'll be right back. Aloha, my name is Paul Jackson, better known as PJ, and my local interest is in sports. I have my own sports radio show at KWAI AM 1080 that you can stream live. I also have my own website, pjsportsradio.com. We have live guests in studio, and we talk about discussions and topics that everyone wants to know locally here on the islands. We cover everything from surfing to basketball to whatever's going on locally, sports-wise. We try to do our best and cover the topics in depth as much as we can. Once again, thank you for joining PJ here on Hawaii Sports Update. Mahalo. Thank you for joining us at ThinkTech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. If you're just joining us, my guest is Mackie Jones. She is the Senior Human Resources Consultant with Planning Services of Hawaii. Before the break, she was talking to us about some of her memorable experiences in Bangladesh, India, New Caledonia, on the projects that she has, uh, that she has worked on in terms of the human resources aspect of opening some different um, uh, resource, uh, resorts. So, Mackie, so it's fascinating the five different things that you need to know um, to, to be able to develop these big projects in um, different countries and you certainly have that perspective and the personality I, I, I wouldn't be able to do the things that you talked about uh, and to be able to think globally and act locally now let's backtrack and tell us how did you get involved in all these different projects and again it reminds me because with HR, I know that even in our program, most of them are women. And while it's fine here, people understand that a lot of women are in HR, but when you go overseas, mm. how does that affect your uh, profession and how do you get things done? Let me start with in the beginning, let, and let me start locally here. Mm. I think I started here and I was very, very fortunate mm. um, to be one of the first um, students in the TIM environment, mm. the travel industry management. Mm -hmm. uh, it, but I was very fortunate that I sat at a college dinner with two human resources women that have, one has since passed and one is still around with us. That has just made me admire uh, Kathy Inkinen, who owns Inkinen and Associates. Oh, okay. She was mm. the uh, HR director at the Kahala at mm. that time. And I sat next to her and I looked at her and I said, I want to be you. I, I really want to be you because she, to me, um, she had what I think is so vital in human resources. And as, as young as I was, and she wasn't much older, I saw the one word that I still use today and that's integrity. Mm -hmm. Being in, in human resources, we sometimes have to say the things that nobody else wants to say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you can't say them in, in a nice way mm -hmm. and allowing the employee to know that it, we don't make you late, you come to work late. Mm -hmm. We don't make you miss work by having absences. It's you that, that doesn't. So by coaching them and being a mentor to them, it helps the employee realize that by the time they're terminated for attendance, it's really them that terminated themselves. Oh, because, of course, yes. Yes, because no one else. So Kathy, Kathy always said to me, Maggie, if you can't have your integrity, mm -hmm. then you can't go on. So when I started at the hotel, I mm -hmm. opened the Ala Moana Hotel, and this ages me, uh -huh. but Ron Jeffries, which was the general manager who's, who, who's now retired and lives in Manoa, mm -hmm. Um, said to me, come on, kiddo, we're going to rock around the building mm -hmm. and there are 350 employees and you're going to introduce me to their first name, their last name, and a little bit about themselves. Oh, my goodness. And I thought, okay, nobody told me I was going to do this. 
But because of that, it made me realize how important mm. that I say this is Alice Lee Hagen. Do you know she has a son that just adores going out and, and, and doing sports outdoors mm -mm -mm. and they travel during the holidays. And <laughs> we start talking about uh -huh. the, the, them. And wow, you've got a good memory. <laughs> did, did I say it right? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. But you, the employee felt great. Mm -hmm. The yeah. general manager felt great because he now got to know mm -hmm. that individual. Mm -hmm. And I made the connection for yeah. them. Mm -hmm. So it was helping that. Mm -hmm. So as I grew up, mm -hmm. I kept trying that mantra. And so I started with the Sheraton Hotels after the Yola mm. Moana, and I opened the Sheraton Waikiki and some of the ah, other neighbor island properties. Uh -huh. And then Sheraton had an opening team where I would go and help open hotels or troubleshoot. Then I got an offer, mm. and it was an interesting offer, Alice. Mm. Sheraton, of course, hands you a book that says, here's the policies and procedures. Mm. Um, Pan Pacific was a new hotel company, oh, and they okay. hired me, and mm -hmm. the general, general manager said, we want you to head HR. Mm -hmm. Here's the policy and procedure manual, and it was an empty three ring binder. And oh. I said, okay. <laughs> he said, I want you to jump as high as you want mm -hmm. and create an environment mm -hmm. that you're gonna be proud of being in head of HR. Wow, what a challenge. It was, uh -huh. and it was so, uh, we took three properties mm -hmm. and made it 27 by opening 27 new hotels, you know, added properties mm -hmm. in different countries. And oh all of them have the same philosophy, mm -hmm. which is when you walked into a Pan Pacific, mm -hmm. you were walking into that culture, whether oh. or not it was Malaysia, whether or not it was San Francisco or the Manolani Bay Hotel. Wow. It was a culture. And that's what made it so nice. Mm -hmm. So then um, Pan Pacific had a great opportunity. The country of Singapore mm -hmm. offered them to move the headquarters to Singapore tax-free for 10 years. Wow. You couldn't turn that down. And I was the only female executive. And I was in human resources in a Japanese company going to a Chinese environment. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so tell us all about that. I, I can just imagine. Um, how did you adapt well, and adjust? Well, having the name Mackie Jones, they looked at the list of executives and mm -hmm. said, we'll bring everybody on. We arrived and they soon realized that Mackie Jones was a female and um, she was married. And unfortunately, um, female executives in Singapore could not get a work visa for their husbands, whereas my president, who was a male, could, with his wife, could get a permanent resident. Mm -hmm. Um, he couldn't get a work visa. He had to do a visitor visa, which means he had to go to Johor Bahru every 15, 14 days out of the country. Um, oh my gosh. So they were very nice and they op opened up an office in San Francisco so that human resources could be housed there. But that's not the way to go. So, so did you commute? I commuted. From San Francisco to Singapore? To Singapore, yes. How long did you do that? I did that for uh, almost five years, co commuting around. Wow. Gosh. And then Caesars offered me mm. a, a great opportunity. Caesars had, at that time, teamed up with Planet Hollywood. Mm. With, and they didn't have a casino at that time, but they were going to open up in the Philippines and in Malaysia. So they partnered with Caesars, and they said, we want an international HR person. Mm -hmm. So uh, they stole me away from Pan Pacific, mm -hmm. and I opened up the Caesar Towers that are existing right now and took them to 10,000 employees. Oh my gosh. But going back to um, your stint when you were in Pan Pacific, being the only female executive there, and the fact that, well, they obviously treated you differently. Were there point in time when you said, okay, that's not working for me. I mean, you've been there five years. Five years, I guess, in retrospect, it's a short time, but... It's actually a long time. It, it, <laughs> given all the challenges right. that you had to deal with. And especially since um, I couldn't speak Chinese. Mm. I couldn't speak. Uh, the Pan Pacific was owned by Tokyo Company okay. at that time. It's now owned by a Singaporean uh, mm. company. Mm. Uh, so they were basically Japanese men. And so they... Um, spoke Japanese, 
and I was the only female, and I spoke no foreign language. I had such a great opportunity by going in and having forward thinkers in Japanese uh, bosses mm. that just saw the potential in me mm -hmm. and allowed me mm -hmm. to go ahead and develop human resources the way I did. And I, I can't thank them enough because they didn't see um, a female. They saw someone that would tell them what they wanted to hear, mm -hmm. whether or not they liked it or not. Mm -hmm. And they had somebody that would say, I understand you don't want to buy in, mm -hmm. but at least give me the chance. And mm -hmm. they said, go for it, mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. for it. And so we did. We dressed them up, in fact. We just dressed Japanese men in as like cheerleaders and had them open <laughs> up a hotel by okay. rah rahing around uh -huh. it. And they loved it because okay. They could embrace what we were bringing is the culture of, of togetherness. So it was really neat. You have had an exciting <laughs> career. Um, do you miss that part, the traveling, going to different places, opening up uh, resorts, um, facilities? You know, if I had to mm -hmm. say which is the best job I had and mm -hmm. what where, where would I be today, mm -hmm. Definitely Pan Pacific gave me the exposure. I mean, it gave me such a wealth mm -hmm. of knowledge and human resources. Mm -hmm. But I think it's what I'm doing right now. It's human resources consultant. Mm -hmm. Because Alice, I have so much fun mm -hmm. going whether or not it's from a pet hospital to a pharmaceutical to a, um, a construction company that is just coming into Hawaii to work mm -hmm. and they don't know what slippers are or, or they don't know what spam is. It, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, or lunch breaks. Uh -huh. I mean, that they're, we're going to go have a plate lunch. Uh -huh. I am so fortunate mm -hmm. that I can now, as a consultant, go in mm -hmm. and help them take best practices and oh. not start with bad practices. I see. And get them to to understand that that it's their culture it's what it's their company it's their money mm -hmm. they have to spend it so why not spend it wisely and if they can embrace human resources and start off right mm -hmm. then what a great talent they're going to bring in hmm. and they're going to attract the best talent so i'm having the best time right now oh great so now when you say consultant it sounds like because you work with really different industries and um, whereas in the past uh, the focus is more on the hospitality mm -hmm. side is that correct yes now um looking back at your 25 well i guess a quarter <laughs> century of experience yes. in hr you're being uh, very nice because it's a lot longer okay but yes, thank you well but you have a lot of great experiences but just one question now if you have to do things differently now that you have all these the hindsight what would that uh, what would you have done differently who or something that you wish you had known something like that, that I wish I know mm -hmm. okay that's actually a good question I, I really wish that um, we have elections every four years for a new president and as a human resource person we hunker down we really do every time there's a new president because oh. think about it we got Cobra mm. we got <sighs> HIPAA all these new words okay. right because we um, had new presidents. They wanted to put their stamp into mm -hmm. what they could do. Right. And in hindsight, I'm doing it now, but I wish I had done it earlier. I, I, I truly, truly wish that I had gotten involved more in what I call lobbying in a different way. Oh. It's educating mm -hmm. our today's politicians in understanding really what the law changes that they are doing and how they're impacting companies all over the United States from either making it or breaking it just by making this one change in law. Because it does, it hurts them, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. tremendously. We used to live on the fact that pension plans were the, the foundation, right? right? Yes. We all were secured by yeah. having pension plans. Um, ERISA just, just double the fee for those that have pension plans. Mm -hmm. You're penalizing rather than 
applauding them. Mm -hmm. So if they had the education, I don't know whether or not they would have done it. That's a good advice for people or young people interested in pursuing HR. And that's almost like advocacy work, mm -hmm. I would imagine. It is. Wow. And I really wish I got more involved in it. But I think during my mm -hmm. heyday, if I can use that term, mm -hmm. because I was doing so much international work, mm -hmm. by the time I got back here mm -hmm. um, to the US, mm -hmm. um, a lot of foundations were already there. I see. That's great advice for, um, I guess, prospective HR professionals mm -hmm. and a great way to wrap up our interview, Maggie. Oh, great. Thank you so much. It has been such a fun <laughs> conversation with I've you. I've enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. My guest is Mackie Jones. She is the human, Senior Human Resources Consultant with Planning Services of Hawaii. You've been watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. Please do join us next week. Aloha.